So I developed um, and worked on how to navigate the job loss. And that's the next big thing, I guess, like breaking news. Um, I am putting out a journal. It's called The Good and Goodbye that shows how to navigate the layoff process, like how to look at your severance package and make sure it makes sense, Um, how to go through interviews, how to keep track of it. And then a bunch of free resources that I found along the way. Like there's a place on the interwebs, on Beyonce's interwebs, where you can get a professional headshot using AI. And it's it's not free, but it's less than the professional photographers I've paid for in the past. Welcome, everybody, back to another exciting show of the About That What podcast. I have the awesome opportunity to bring on Jay Stevens, is an award winning leader in finance and the founder of Rich Like My Melanin which is now registered trademark, just gotta put that out there. You know, so Jay uses a comedic and relatable approach to transform complex financial concepts into easy and actionable plans with the focus on wealth builders of color. She empowers her clients to own their financial futures and the result is an average of annual salary increase of 50% or an additional $2,400 in their annual budget. So in order to have that, you know, this show is all about building strong financial habits. So I think this will be an episode for you. Matter of fact, I don't think I know this is an episode for you. So welcome to the stage, to the virtual stage. How you doing today, Jay? Hey y'all, thank you for having me here today, Anthony. You know I like air horns, so in my mind I was like, thank you on the air horns. You know oh, air horns. I got you on the air horn. <laughs> it's like if I ever put out a mixtape, right. it's probably a lot of air horns and uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and then I'm gonna drop like a hot sixteen or maybe a strong eight, and then that's it. <laughs> that's, <Okay. laughs> that's the whole mixtape. Air horns. Uh, took a, uh, a strong eight or hot sixteen. Oh, you gotta Shoot. give us a little something. Give us a little something. What you got? I do. Oh, oh, <laughs> ooh, I was not ready. Okay, so look, collegiate Daisy on site. I can just be like, I spit and I rhyme. I rhyme and I spit. Hopefully, you're old enough to catch that reference. Yes. Um, <laughs> dance, but in Dave Chappelle. But yeah, so I really thought I was something. I really thought I was like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the next Missy Elliott. I mean, saving me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's never too late. I mean, it's never too late. Thank you for believing in me yeah. and, my dream, <laughs> and my dreams that I have already put on the show. Your dreams and aspirations. <laughs> <laughs> You're most welcome. So, you know, we we've been chatting on and off from time to time and yeah. stuff like that. So, you know, what what's been new in, in your life lately? Ooh, how far should we go back? Um, we don't have to go that far back. I mean, just latest. Right? It is not that long of a show. <laughs> um, okay, I will give the. I'll, it's it's almost a year back, but I'll give the shortened version of it. So I want to say, um, well, I know we were like first connected at FinCon 2022, yep. um, and then that was September October of last year. So pretty much a full year from when we're recording now. And in November, I got laid off. And I was living my best life um, before I got laid off. I mean, I'm still living my best life now, but it's a different kind of best life when you work for a tech company. So I worked for um, Meta, better known as Facebook, or formerly known as Facebook. And I mean, I'm not going to lie, y'all. I was making good money. Uh, I was smooth carrying out, like bringing home about a quarter million a year. They pay you very well. <laughs> it's sick. It sounds like, like they you did. a lot of benefits, huh? Yeah, it sounds like they really did. Look, look, listen, and listen, look, it was, I'm not complaining. I mean, I'm complaining about some of the things, but, uh, you know, for legal purposes, you can't say stuff when you're complaining. So, um, (laughs) it just, I was laid off. I was actually, I was on sick leave, um, and not sick, like, ooh, I got a cold, (laughs) like, emergency medical leave for an extended period of time. Um, And I went on leave on that Monday. And then I got an email at 5.56 a.m. that Wednesday that said, you no longer work here. And I said, well, how does this work? Like, medical leave just started. Um, 
And it's been an interesting year. So I said I would give the shortened version of what happened. So throughout that year, um, I have two properties, one that was being rented on D.C., but my tenants had moved out in September. It took me until February of this year to get a new tenant in there. Um, then I had my place in Texas. I was trying to sell that. Still haven't been able to sell it. So getting, I eventually said I'm going to rent it out. Um, but I was paying two mortgages without a job. Um, I moved myself back from, so I, I was relocated to Austin with Meta. I moved myself back from Austin um, to the DC area. I'm now a Marylander. Um, and right. I love it because I'm with my family, my friends, I'm with my peoples now. Shout out to Anthony, you know, the DC right. um, crew. And um, I froze my eggs. That was a whole process. That was a lot. I did. I went to Bali. I did my whole like eat, pray, love, find mm -hmm. my center and all whatever those things are, they say. But really, I just went for good food and beach uh, vibes. And then I finally landed on my feet um, with the new job. And in the meantime, also grew my brand a lot more. So Rich Like My Melon, and I got, you mentioned, I got the trademark. Um, I expanded my <laughs> And it's been a lot, but it I can I'm generally an optimistic, jovial person. Um, but I will say it were there were times when it was hard to be that way when you just feel like I keep trying. I applied to no less than 150 jobs, and I'm not talking about just anything. Like I took the do the time and did the due diligence to look at the right companies for me to apply to jobs to update my resume. I had career. I had multiple career coaches. Um, one of which was really good, and still, it's it's like I would say out of that, I got an interview less than 10 percent of the time. Um, Two so or three. Out of, so out of 100, so you're saying out of 150, you probably only did 15 interviews? 15, like, legitimate interviews. There's always like, oh, every now and then I'm saying, oh, and then I'm the um, recruiter. Oh, you know, we want to have a phone screening. Yeah. Um, but recruiters, they go harder than people on dating apps. Like, oof, child. <laughs> the social etiquette is not there with recruiters. Mm -hmm. So even if I, and, and it's, it's not indicative of my skills i eventually had to learn that and shout out to my friends who encouraged me and reminded me of that because i'm thinking you know i've been doing this we talked about my pro you gave the intro you talked about my professional background um within rich like my melanin but before rich like my melanin i was in corporate america and i've done a lot i've worked with some major companies worked for some major companies and to just not get responses is it's wild um but Thank God I had savings and I got God. So I kept it moving. Um, and like I said, I'm happy to be back in a better place, enjoying life. I mean, you see the white walls behind me. Like, clearly, I haven't fully yeah. got set up, but um, we can do a part two. Like, I don't know, in the next six months when I finally <laughs> get, 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 get like moving into my house. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll give y'all what did they used to do? Um, MTV Cribs. I'll give y'all yeah. MTV Cribs. Like, <laughs> and now. You can see what it looks like when I moved in. Um, there's not like a bunch of boxes right outside the the screen that I'm hiding from y'all. Yeah, we, and that's the thing about uh, you know, the visuals. It's like it's, it feel like you're in a movie set sometimes when you're looking at the visuals, where it's like all this stuff in the background, but you see this pristine, clean yes. shot every time. Yes, yes. Okay, unrelated to anything. Speaking of backgrounds, what do you think of when you see a blogger, a vlogger, anyone like that, that has a grass wall and or neon lights? When I see them, I actually think that is interesting, but I'm like, well, what's behind the that grass? You know, what, what's behind that, that, that visual? So I'm not sure what's, what's going on there. Okay. I'm this it was unrelated to anything. You can completely cut this if you need to later. Oh, but but I have someone shared. They were like, whenever you see a restaurant with a grass wall, you know they're gonna have hookah wings, um, oh. and stuff like that. And so I said, I wonder if there's a version of that for podcasters because like podcasters are having the plastic grass wall and like the neon light that said like I don't know flex your finances or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I don't know if there was a demographic for that. A stereotype for that um not for park well i would say for podcasting i would say if i see that i'm thinking like hey it's going to be a fun episode like they their show isn't taken as serious as some of those with 
books behind them. But I'm Don't trying you to do that because that's some good <laughs> solid oak right there. That's some good solid wood. And you got the Wall Street Journal. I see product placement about that wallet. Yeah. You got a degree, let them know. You mm. got a pop of color, whatever the I'm thinking it's a lay that's hanging off the degree. You own that. Yeah, yeah, my little pop. And then I got my little my little holiday stuff on the other side. Oh, I missed that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for the holiday episodes, I turn this way. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then the rest of the year, I sit this For the rest of the right, right. See? <laughs> See, <laughs> it like you could just take that down. Like, it's not mounted to the wall. You really could just pull that down. I can pull it down. Out you were like, no, no. All I'm going <laughs> to do is sit here like this. So the two you just moved, I had not seen that thing. We've been talking for like, for those of y'all who don't know, we've been talking for like 40 minutes before we press record. Yeah, that right. thing has been sitting there the whole time. I didn't know. You said, uh, I'm not, it's too much effort to move it down. It's just going to sit here. Yeah, that's good. Cool. And the thing about it, it's actually two of them. So it's great. Because it's not on self be true. You also yeah. have to the left, you have product placement, you got the mm -hmm. mug, and you got your, uh, the, the brand, the logo on your logo, on your polo. Thank good you. For you. And look, this was my product placement today. Um, one of my mm -hmm. product lines is my piece is priceless. Mm -hmm. I didn't even pull out my rich, like my melanin mug. I didn't put on a cap, anything. I said it is what it is. Y'all go to the website. It's there. Go to the website. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pushing products like that. My whole team was like, you have products? I was like, yeah. What the fact that y'all didn't know that? Yo, the same thing with me. It's like, they were like, um, you, ha you have shirts? And I was like, right. yeah. Um, I was like, they was like, what else you got? I was like, I got desk mats. I got bucket hats. I got, you know, bags, whatever you need. We have merch. And then I'm thinking, aren't you on the team? Like, haven't you on the <laughs> website? What? Do we need a tutorial? You know what? I was actually thinking about moving the merch to the main page and just kind of have it as a... Oh. It's like, it seemed like one page just seemed to get more traction because people don't want to click around on websites. Yeah, yeah. But then it's like, when you have that one page that just scrolls forever... And I get to the bottom and I'm like, I, I read all of this and I still didn't find what I was looking for. Yeah. And it shouldn't take that long. I don't know. We got, we'll figure out something. Anyway, back to the show. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that you talked about, which is getting laid off, because, you know, I talk about, you know, the habit building of habit of savings. Um, how important was having your savings before they fired you on your day off like they did Craig on Friday? <laughs> you my peoples. Because, because <laughs> when I posted that I got laid off, I used the clip from Friday. How did you fired on your day off? I used that clip when I got laid off. So I was like, that's what I kept thinking. Like, how did you get fired on your day off? Okay, so how important were savings? So... They were the lifeline um, financially to keep me going, to keep me afloat. So before um, I was working at Meta, I was in consulting. So I worked at Deloitte. I was doing federal consulting. And they pay pretty well, too. I mean, they don't pay tech, but they pay well. And my big goal there was to pay off debt because, unfortunately, a lot, you know, life be life. And, and I had a lot of debt. And it wasn't one of those, oh, I made bad decisions or, you know, I was... Sending money frivolously, just life happens. You get medical debt, you get, obviously I still got student loan debt. Um, but I paid off the debt. And then when I came to Meta and I was working with my financial planner um, and shout out to like, please understand, just like doctors have doctors, mm -hmm. financial planners have financial planners. So although I'm not a financial planner yet, um, I was working with at the time a financial planner. She's fabulous. Um, named Chloe Moore. And Chloe put me on to, you know, we really need to build up your savings because I was always investing. I just liked investing. It was fun to me. Yeah. So even though I knew I needed savings, I was kind of like, I got something. So I'll work with it. Um, but during the time that I was at Meta, I was able to save up about 50K, I believe, between different accounts. And this is not... Um, saving as far as like your 401k like in my mind that's investing yeah it was there's the i've opened the high yield savings account and i have and for me i intentionally opened an account with a different bank so that when i open my mobile app for the like the primary checking account mm -hmm. i don't even see what's in my savings so then in my mind it doesn't make me think i bet i can go because i will book a trip and i'll go <laughs> to a nice restaurant Southwest and Delta, particularly Delta, because I prefer Delta, they know to like send me alerts. We got to sell. You want this? Every because time. Know, I'm like, I mean, I could leave the country. I'll do it. 
My passport stays ready. Um, I got a suitcase <laughs> in my bedroom right now that I haven't unpacked because I'm just like, I know I'm traveling again next week. I don't really need to fully unpack it. I just need to take out the dirty clothes and swap. So off tangent or so on a tangent. So the point is, I was, I was, I opened the savings account on a separate bank with a separate bank so that I would not be tempted to spend. <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. And because of that, I was able to get about 50K built up. Um, so when I got laid off and then I will say they gave us a really nice severance package, a very generous that I can't complain. Actually, I can exclaim with joy. That was a nice severance package. Okay. It was so nice that most of us didn't qualify for unemployment until like eight months, 10 months later oh. because they were paying us so much. The unemployment said, y'all good. Like <laughs> you can live on this for a while. And it wasn't just salary. It was salary. Um, you you kept your health benefits. They cover and, and tech companies give extensive um, health benefits. So like um, mental health, you still can meet with therapy. You had your dental, you had your vision, obviously medical. Um, it was so many benefits they gave us. And then they gave us a career coaching program. So that's one of the career coaches I had. Actually, two of them came from there. Um, so it helped that I had my savings. I had the severance package. And I was growing and getting opportunities with um, my brand, with Rich Like My Melanin. So it helped in the, to the extent that I was paying two mortgages. And I was just trying to figure it out. Job, right? <laughs> and, and, and let's be clear, it was two grown adult mortgages. These were not like, <laughs> oh, you got a mortgage like, you know, in 1995 and you only paying a little bit. No. $2,000, yeah. Yeah, this was not an OK Boomer like <laughs> mortgage. It was a grown millennial <laughs> mortgage with 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 interest and everything. I mean, all mortgages have interest, but yeah, it was. So I was happy to be able to do that, especially when I had to move back, um, move myself back because a cross country move is expensive. Getting the like, just it's also just so much energy to coordinate the movers, having them come out, and then when they deliver, and I had to get storage, put all my stuff in, and driving across country. And I am not a road trip person. I said I like to drive. I ain't say I like to drive. Uh -huh. I'm not a passenger princess either. Put me on a plane. Let me go somewhere. So <laughs> the fact that I had to drive across country because I had to humble myself because I didn't want to pay to have my car shipped. Um, all of that. Mm -hmm. Savings helps with all of that. I probably would have just sold the car. And <laughs> I thought about that, but then I said, am I in a position to buy a new car when I sell it? Uh -huh. um, okay. Because just things weren't selling like that. Like the, I, I know there's commercials out there. There's always a commercial that says the housing market is hot. If you mm -hmm. want to sell or the ho the job market is hot. If you want to employ, bump that. I ain't see that heat. I said, <laughs> chill. Like my house did not sell. I'm being very honest and authentic and saying, oh. I was humbled. I just knew I said, got a three bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage, nice, beautiful mm -hmm. gated backyard. Like this thing is about to move. Mm. It also kind of was my realtor too. They weren't really, he wasn't really on it, but I won't tag him in the comments. He knows okay, who he yeah, is. Yeah. Ain't gonna worry about that guy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because he was not about that wallet. No, I well, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, child. So, you know, you've been on several podcasts you, throughout the years and, you know, really pushing out your your brand and awareness. Um, because we talked about savings and so forth, but what is your message to the people today to kind of help them get to that next level? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. The shortest version of this is to have a plan and then have options and backups. Um, and I say that because no matter where you are in life, if you have some kind of plan, this could be the type A in me, but if you have some kind of plan, it helps you to organize your your time, your resources, so that you're just not throwing stuff anywhere um, and saying like, okay, I'm going to try to, we were talking about flipping real estate earlier, like I'm going to try to buy a house now, or I'm going to try to build my retirement. It the And I, again, the reason I had savings is because we developed a plan. We looked at where I was um, overall and said, this is how we can get you to the point because my whole goal is I want to retire early and and I'm not one of those like aggressive fire people because if I was I wouldn't travel and I would eat generic food and stuff like I'm not that I'm not lean fire I'm give me name brands give me I'm not fire. always right. but like, uh, I, <laughs> like like I'm not sacrificing joy now to be able to retire and keep sacrificing joy retirement I want to live a happy and like prosperous life throughout um so 
having a plan is what helps get me there and being able to say, okay, when things fall apart, when you get laid off, what does that look like for you? Like how much, how long can you go? And I really didn't lay out a budget to say, how long can I go before I have to start finding like some scrappy ways to hustle out here and scrappy for me. I mean, obviously legal, but like, you know, going back to flipping cargoes at old Navy. Cause I used to be an old Navy gal and I, and I used to be at, be at banana Republic. They weren't when you go to banana Republic, they're chinos, not khakis right. anymore or cargoes, but still like I said, you know, how long can I go before I need to get a job in retail again or something like that. Um, so having the plan helped me there. And then, the next thing that I would say is like kind of the big message or the part two, I guess, sub part A or whatever of having a plan is that the same thing applies to the job hunt. So what I learned in this layoff journey this past year, I always had job opportunities thrown at me. I've ha I have a security clearance. I have the, the resume, all the things. And this isn't like an humble brag, although if you insert an air horn now, I won't stop you. <laughs> That's what you thought. <laughs> I was like, but I will wait and see the air horn. Wait and see the oil. Um, right. <laughs> um, so, like, I wasn't used to having to be in a position of rejection and struggle with, like, getting a job. It is, I mean, that thing hurts. And at some point, you just get desensitized. You don't even open the email. Like, I just knew the, the, the title. They don't want to say no. Yeah. So, I developed um, and worked on how to navigate the job loss. And that's the next big thing, I guess, like breaking news. Um, I am putting out a journal. It's called the good and goodbye that shows how to navigate the layoff process, like how to look at your severance package and make sure it makes sense. Um, how to go through interviews, how to keep track of it. And then a bunch of free resources that I found along the way, like there's a place on the interwebs on Beyonce's interwebs Beyonce. where you can get a professional headshot using AI and it's, Oh. It's not free, but it's less than the professional photographers I've paid for in the past. Um, I mean, they're not going to do your hair. Shout out to my curls and whatever they want today. They won't <laughs> do your hair and makeup, but like they will give you a professional look, um, a clean look. So it'll have it has the, the journal has resources like that. And it's all part of having a plan. Like, yes, have a plan for finances, but have a plan for how you get back on your feet when you're laid off. That is awesome because a lot of people right now are going to be feeling the pinch um, yeah. or have filled the pinch and they just don't know where to go. And I have to say is like, even if you have a job in tech, they're everybody's saying like, oh yeah, with a tech job, you can get a job within the next three months. And I'm like, mm, depending on the job, depending on what you're trying to do in tech, it's, it runs the gamut because it's almost like saying you work at a hospital. Okay. The hospital has a person that actually turns on the lights and do all this extra stuff. Like everybody has a different uh, niche inside the industry. So and that's the reason why I was asking about the savings, because, you know, once you know, when you're looking for another job, you need to know how much you need to save until that next job lands. And usually that three to six months, it sounds nice, but is it really enough for your, your job industry? Yeah, that's part of what's in the journal as well. The difference between having, um, I, I say, like the rich auntie um, budget where the rich auntie can, well, honestly, I am the rich auntie, travel, travel the world, eat good meals, stop by to see the nephews and niece and like drop off gifts and then scatter about, you know, throughout the world again. Um, so there's that budget, the, the floss and the, I'm, you know, fabulous doing whatever I want life and then there is the shoestring budget which is those people that are like the super lean fire early retirement kind of thing they um live by that shoestring budget that's also sometimes what they call the college budget or the ramen noodles budget even though ramen noodles cost a lot more than they used to now too to be honest what is that i'm like they like 250 i'm like what right for high blood pressure on a cup all the sodium in there needs to be like what 10 cent less than a dollar uh, okay it was like it was a struggle mill for a reason. You right. could be struggling <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Inflation, it's real. Um, we all knew this, but when you see it on the shelf, like it's it's really styrofoam in a microwave and water. It's but okay. Anyway, I'm not saying that to say I'm above eating the ramens, but mm -hmm. just like that's the kind of budget that you need to have. That's the kind of plan, that's the kind of savings you need to have. And you're right that historically if you reach a certain level of education or experience, you only have to wait three to six months um, before you get a job, typically. Mm -hmm. But there's periods right now, 
um, for example, where that just isn't the case anymore. So I got my job in June. Um, I hadn't done the math on this before. So that was eight months that I was laid off. I will say there was one job that came up before then, and I did decline it simply because they wanted me to stay in Austin. And I really did not want to be in Austin anymore. Um, I just missed my family and friends so much. And I also missed really good fresh seafood because for whatever reason, they made it to Austin. They were, it was all over Houston, but it was Austin. They served imitation crab meat. Who oh. does that? To so a girl who lived in D.C., Maryland, but yeah, you yeah. send me that little rubbery lip. Right, right. Oh. <laughs> and I said, how dare you send me spray painted red crab meat? Mm, so off topic. And, and clearly I'm good at getting off topic. The, the point is I didn't accept that job because I didn't want to stay in the land of imitation crab meat in Austin. So you have to be able to figure out like how long can you last? Do you have the budget? Do you have the savings? Um, and even when you have a job, still having the savings to say, these are some of the goals I want. Like I want to be able to buy a house. I want to have a fabulous birthday party, wedding. I don't know. I'll, some people, they go all out for their pets, whatever you want to do. I want to afford to send my children to college. What's your thing? Um, can you afford it? Are you in a position to do that? And do you have the savings for it? Nice. Now, speaking of savings, I'm going to go back just a little bit. Um, where did you get rich like my melanin from? Ooh. Mm. I'm going to say God put that on my heart. Mm. Um, and that might sound a little corny saying it like that, but that le that le is legitimately how it happened. So when I, so I was first introduced to finance in college and um, there is a columnist for the Washington Post named Michelle Singletary. Yep. And she has an article, um, a regular article in the Washington Post called The Color of Money. And I remember reading um, shortly after I graduated college, one of her articles, and it talked about how people of color are not educated in investing. Um, until it's too late. It's not, and this wasn't, it wasn't meant to be a blank statement. Like no black person knows how to invest and no Latina knows this, you know, what an apple stock. It wasn't one of those kind of things. It was in general, these things aren't taught in school. Um, and they're also just not something that's discussed at home for black and brown people. So how can that change? And her article, that's one of the goals of the color of money is to teach people. So I always wanted to do something that really, helps people of color understand finance. And it's great if, you know, if you're of European descent and you get some gems from this, that's great. Like, I'm not saying you can't, you know, learn from this. Um, but my focus is on teaching people of color, especially women. Women learn so much, do so much. And the fact that we can't, we don't readily get this information presented to us or it's being mansplained, it's, it's just wild to me. So I know I can fix that problem and I decided I would fix it. And I wanted to be able to center the title of my organization, the name in a way that makes it clear. This is who I'm after. If anybody else grabs something good for you, I'm glad you're here. Sit down, enjoy yourself. But we are centering black women in this conversation because they deserve it. They need it. Um, and in general, people that are melanated. I'm going to add a footnote here just to make sure if you are colorist, don't come for me in the comments. I ain't got time for it. Thus far, <laughs> thus far, I have not had to deal with it like that. But when they're like, well, what if I, because I did have one person who is of a fairer complexion. She's a black woman, but she's a fair complexion. She said, well, does it not apply to me um, because of my melanin's not as rich as yours? And I said, no, why you choose violence? Like, why did you, why did you go down that road? Like, as a rich no one was thinking that but you. Um, so, no, it's not meant to be a thing that says, like, ooh, if you're fair skinned, you don't deserve to be as rich as darker skinned. Girl, stop. Like, boy, stop. Don't. Don't pick up that struggle. We we are not splitting hairs like that. Yeah. It is just saying um, people of color deserve and should be able to access this information. And I'm going to put it out there so they can. Awesome. And that leads to the third segment, which is the features. So what skills or habits do you feel that will take you to the next level? Ooh, me specifically or anyone yeah. in general? Actually, mm -hmm. it's the same in it either way. Um, discipline, self-discipline, consistency, and having a professionalism in the way you carry yourself. And when I say professionalism, go out of your way to try to do right by people. Try to be understanding. Listen with the intent of understanding. Communicate with the intent of understanding, learning, um, and being receptive 
to different perspectives um, and showing up and being a good, decent human being, right? Like, you know, recycle when you can and, you know, go to a march every now and then, fight for others, rally, stuff like that. Ruhaha. But also know your boundaries. And as the viral soundbite says, I'm a sick beside him. Like, I'm like, I know what I stand for, what I don't. <clears throat> and having that, that line in the sand, having those boundaries has helped me a lot more in life with um, knowing what's right for me and knowing how to move forward. So, be self-disciplined. Say I'm going to get up and I'm going to record an episode today. Shout out to you for doing it. Um, mm -hmm. And then be consistent. Say I'm going to record an episode today, but guess what? Next week, I'm also going to record another episode. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I have a job today. I'm going to go Monday. And guess what? I'm going to go back the next week. And I'm at least try to smile once. And maybe even smile at a person. Not just smile <laughs> at my phone. So I scroll through something. Um, and then... Be a professional about it in the way that you show up. Like, you know, I said, be courteous, but also like know your boundaries and be able to express that and stick to your guns without. Oh, can we say stick to your guns? Is that a cancel term? Mm, if so, don't. Mm, let's scratch it. If no. So, yeah, keep it going. Don't cancel that term now. Um, but stick to your guns as far as like, you know what you stand for. And then there are kind ways to say yes or no. Awesome. Also, one more footnote to that. Shout out to the. Um, organizations that are DMing me saying like, oh, we want to collaborate with you. I'm sticking to my guns. The price is what it is. <laughs> and, and I don't sell and promote stuff just because you came into my DM and wanted to promote it. I am promoting things that I think are helpful and honest and ethical products or services for my followers. I owe that to them. So don't come over here with no mess. I know that's <laughs> not you, Anthony. I'm just shocked. Like the people in the DM don't ask me to push nothing that I know good and well I wouldn't ask myself to use. Exactly. Um, yeah, so far nobody has come to me about that yet. Lies, lies. I know <laughs> I know you have to have people coming to you. Lies. Um, uh, not really. It's mostly me reaching out. Honestly. You being real humble and that's cool, but like okay. Well, we'll manifest it now for yeah. you. Yes, let's manifest it. When we have this part two where I have a background, you're also gonna like have a running list on the screen of all the brands. That and we're going to put air horns over them. <laughs> and I'm going to say, mm, <laughs> we definitely got to have you up. We get your rap together, you know, get you back in. Hey. The right. I was about to go into DC. I was like, young, it's going to be like, but no, yes. Um, when I, when I, when I have that moment, when I'm flossing. Okay. We got you. Is there anything that you want to leave the audience before we dive into the final four questions of the show? I feel like you covered it. And I always feel like I have little tidbits to share. But I think this was a good conversation as it was. Awesome. All right. Well, you ready for the final four? Hopefully. All right. So question number one, what does wealth mean to you? Ooh, freedom to do and choose as you please. Freedom and flexibility. Number two. What was your worst money mistake? something that was so um, snappy. I will say zesty, <laughs> controversial maybe. Um, what was my worst money mistake? I feel like depending on what day you ask me, <laughs> there could be different responses. Can I give like the top three? I won't even tell the story. I'll just say oh, like the top, three. top three. Okay, not negotiating my salary. Okay. So I was ending up with salaries that didn't work for me, um, not having boundaries. So saying yes to things that I should have said no to. So then I was taking on more and more work, more and more opportunities. And of course, like the debt that went with it. And then staying in a relationship that I didn't need to be in anymore because I was in that relationship and I was not focusing on other ways that I could be building myself up. I wasn't even in love. I was just there. Like, I guess this is what we do. I don't know like, <laughs> what a relationship is, which I recognize that like that third one can kind of fall into that second one. Like I should have said no to that relationship sooner, but eh, whatever. Yeah. I had a whole episode about mine. So I know what you mean. We there. Yeah. Num number three, uh, what is your favorite financial or non-financial book? Ooh. I'll do both. My favorite financial book is The Psychology of Money by Jeff Knopfsinger. That book. I really should have had it. Like, I, you can barely see my, what, this way? You can really see my little bookcase over there. It's on the bookcase. Um, but it's the book that talks about the way people think about investing. 
And it ex- and there's the, like all kinds of books on the psychology of money, the psychology of savings, all of this, like psychology of debt. But I really like the psychology of investing because it also just showed human behavior and how even outside of investing, how people feel about loss, um, how people feel about success and victory, um, group mentality, group thinking mentality, things like that. And then my favorite non-financial books, probably the Bible. I feel like everything's in there. It's like a reality yeah, show in there. Book. There's life advice in there, tantalizing stories, yeah. motivation, all that, all that. Awesome. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are looking to get the book, uh, The Psychology of Money, depending on your library, if you have a library card, make sure you download the app libby and you can actually be able to download it for free and listen to it because i was able to get it for audiobook but i was on hold for like at least two months you know what okay. we're gonna do what's that moment bright idea i like people to learn and you know giveaways and stuff if there's a moment where a light bulb could go ding above my head this would be it to so the little ding. well all i gotta do is that's, that's about it <laughs> gesture with it um thank you um for doing that so I will give away, I will sponsor, I don't know, a giveaway of one copy of um, Jeff Knopfsinger's The Psychology of Investing. Yes, y'all can still download it and get it from Libby for free. Um, but Anthony, you can decide what the giveaway parameters are if you want people to, I don't know, like your comment or whatever people do now to promote stuff. But um, I, I will give it away. Just tell me where I need to, like, whether I need to get somebody an Amazon gift card to go buy it or whether I need to ship it to someone, although I personally don't want to have people's mailing address because that's not a responsibility I want to care. But however y'all want to get this book, we'll sponsor somebody to go ahead and read it. All right. What we'll do is um, I used to give away doing my live shows. So Ooh. one of the things what we can do is after this episode is released, we set up a live show to give away the book. Sounds good? I like it. I like it. All right. You can do that. Cool. Y'all are gonna see me again. Hey, leave it in the comments. Different. Leave it in the comments. Um, I do read them even if you leave them comments on Spotify because you can leave them per episode now. So, I didn't, that's true. That's true. I have been listening on Spotify. You're right. Yeah. So, final fourth question: What is your favorite dish to make? I know you gave me these questions in advance that I could be prepared, and yet here I am wasting time thinking of the answer. Um, I like to cook, and so I make a seared salmon for, like, chef's kiss. Mm -hmm. Um, It turns out right pretty consistently, like, as far as the texture and flavor and everything. But I also like making fried chicken. (laughs) (laughs) And I feel like... um, there's so there's like a seared salmon with fresh vegetables or some fried chicken wings um with some collard greens because my greens do hit um that would be i feel like the top ones and this isn't including bacon this is just like cooking okay um because bacon's a different thing altogether no comment on that one but yeah you're right <laughs> no yeah because like cooking I season to my heart's content. I'm like, mm, I feel like that's enough seasoning. And like, let me, but baking, is, that's a science. You can't just, you know, pour as much flour and eggs as you want. You actually got to follow a recipe. Yeah, it's more of a science. That one. Yeah. Awesome. Now, the very last question of this show is where could people find out more about you? Yes. So my website, RLMM. Financial, F I N A N T I A L dot com, which stands for Rich Like My Melanin Financial. Um, but I tend to be most active on Instagrams and Instagram, TikTok, all of those girls. I am, uh, my page is Rich Like My Melanin. And yeah, I do some on YouTube. Every now and then I, you know, put myself out there. I zhuzh it up and I get on camera and things like that. Oh, so, so, but mainly I would say the website or Instagram. I know it's pronounced Instagram, y'all. I just say Instagram. <laughs> we got you on Instawebs. Yes, the interwebs. So, Jay, it's been a pleasure to have you on this show, and I greatly appreciate all the information that you provided. So, those of you who are listening, who got some value out of this particular episode and thought that somebody um, who's going through a struggle time right now, who just recently lost their job, and just kind of need a little pick-me-up and some resources, definitely share this episode out uh, so we can get in touch with Jay 
and all the other content on this particular platform so that they can have the life that they want to have. And with that being said, remember, this is about building habits. So be safe out there. I'm out. Peace.